Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. I have had many requests to actually review the homeschool curriculum that I use. And even though my channel is primarily a planner channel, I wanted to get this review out there because I really love the curriculum that I use. And if I can help spread the word around and help any other homeschool moms because there is so much curriculum out there and it can be very overwhelming. Let me start really quick in summary with my homeschool story. I have an older son that will be in ninth grade and be 15 years old in September in high school this next school year. And he has never homeschooled his whole life. I was a public school teacher for three years before I stayed home with my kids. And so that was a long, long time ago. It was before I had my first son. Then my second son will be in fourth grade this next school year, and I have homeschooled him since first grade. So he did go to preschool and kindergarten um, in a public school. So this will be our fourth year, full year to homeschool. We're going into fourth grade. Let's start out here. Um, last year was my first year to use the Good and the Beautiful curriculum, and I fell in love with it. So let me tell you about it. It is a Christian-based curriculum. It is not, I am Mormon, LDS, but it is not LDS-based. It is for any Christian would like this curriculum. Sometimes um, God is referred to. Sometimes a scripture is referred to. And um, just good and beautiful things are taught. The good things of the world. And all the books she has chosen, all the stories she has chosen, teach us really good values, morals, and the ways that we want to live our lives. So this Good and the Beautiful curriculum for her language arts curriculum, it includes literature, grammar and usage, punctuation, art, geography, spelling, vocabulary, and writing. Yes, that's really all in this curriculum. And like I said, we used a full year of it last year and loved it. Now, we are going to be in level three, even though he's in fourth grade next year. And let me tell you why. He's already done the level three readers. His reading is way, way, is ahead of where he is in language arts. So he's already finished their level three readers. He will just be reading other good books off the Good and the Beautiful book list next year. And we will talk about that. But... Last year, I went with level two curriculum, even though he was in third grade, because they have a little test online you can give your kids. And it tells you, you know, helps you determine which level they should be in. They said that these levels do not necessarily correspond to the grade that they are in. It was not made to correspond to grade level. And you can find all that on their website and all the tests to give to choose which level. And so because she was teaching a lot of things, um grammar and usage and diagramming sentences already starting last year in level two. And we hadn't done any of that in our previous language arts curriculum. It had not taught us a lot of those things. So I felt like if we skipped the year of level two, he would be missing out on a lot of that foundation that he needed to move up in their curriculum. And so I am glad that I made that decision. We, we did level two last year. So this year we're doing level three, even though we're in fourth grade. And at level four, her curriculum changes, kind of. It's um, it's more student-directed, where they can go through the book more on their own and just need to have check-ins with you. So up until level three, though, it is directed by you, the teacher. So there's a lot more involved where I need to be there for the duration of every lesson, and I need to be guiding every lesson right now. But once you get to level four, that changes and it is more student directed. And it also changes as in they have like a whole nother course book with level four. So definitely look at that online if you are in one of those more upper levels. And um, also I will link her YouTube channel below, but Monson Schoolhouse, I think that's the name of her YouTube channel. Michaela has done wonderful reviews on the good and the beautiful also. And she has some older kiddos, like one in um, middle school. And so if you want to see some of the upper level curriculum, that would be someone great to check out. Okay, so let me show you this book and tell you how we used it. Sorry, that was a long, long introduction, if you are still with me. All right, so last year, what I did, I actually unbound my book. I actually unspiraled it. Now, why did I do that? 
because a lot of the pages in here are for the student to work on. Now, some is just artwork you look at. We'll go through all this. Okay, some is just things you read together. Some are geography lessons. But if my son carried around this big book to write in, this whole book would be torn up before the year's over because he is just rough on things. Okay, so it worked much better for us. I mean, I think some kids could definitely handle, you know, carrying around this big book and writing in it. But sometimes we do our work on the couch. Sometimes we do our work at the kitchen table. Sometimes we even bring it upstairs to the game room couch. So we carry it all over and it just worked better for us. I unbound the whole book. And then, so I wish there was an option that it came unbound and hole punch so I could stick it in a big notebook, but that's okay. I just unbound it and like kept it in a bin and I just ground out the pages as we needed them. And we actually keep those pages on a clipboard as we're working on them. We just, we keep the pages on a clipboard and that worked really well for him to work off of. So that's how we did it. Okay, so we're gonna get into this. This is also made with really good paper which you know as a planner person, I really appreciate. So it's amazing paper and color printing. You guys, for the price of their curriculum, you cannot get anything else out there that I'm aware of like this. Okay, so first of all, she shows you level three at a glance. She's gonna go through everything you're learning there. Then she outlines every single lesson, what it is, what the page number is. That is really helpful in and of itself. Especially when you're planning what weeks you're going to do what lessons and how long your school year is going to be. It comes with 130 lessons. Most school districts, because, well, we go on the public school schedule since my older son is in public school. And we go around, trying to remember, 180 days. Um, don't quote me on that exact number. I had just mapped out his math. And so I think it was somewhere around that number. We go around that number and... Um, yeah, so you will have plenty of time to get done all the 130 lessons. Many people don't do their language arts on a Friday or something like that. We always did our language arts on a Friday unless we were doing a special field trip or activity. So there were different times, um, days we took off and some of the language arts lessons were actually longer and we actually took two days to do a lot of the lessons. And so that worked out having more lessons. So instead of making it just really long for him and really making him hate it, I would split a long lesson into two days and that worked well for us too. So I like that she doesn't give you too many lessons that you can either take Fridays off from language arts, you know, or you can take field trip days off or family days off and not worry. And you can also split longer lesson days. Then she tells you all about this course. If you're not familiar and have not used her curriculum, I really recommend you read all this before you even start planning into it or anything. Like I said, it literally does cover all these things. Phonics, reading, literature, spelling, writing, grammar, and usage, punctuation, vocabulary, geography, art appreciation. This level comes with two reader books, which he's already read. Um, last year, I will have to pull those out. I didn't pull those out of my cabinet because we already had those. And um, I will show them to you. So they can read for like 20 minutes every day and they're readers and she picks really good stories. I'll, I'll show those to you. But if they're done with that, she has a good and the beautiful book list online, which you can download. And there is so much good literature off there to pick from. You can pick books from there to have your child be reading. Okay, so this kind of tells you levels pre-K through level three, what it focuses on. So this is level three, that's the last of this group and how the parent really directs all that. And then levels four and above, um, she adds in a whole nother book for like art and she tells you levels four and six are pastels, levels five and eight are water watercolor, level seven is pencil drawing and level 10 is pen, ink and calligraphy. Levels do not match public school grade levels. There she talks about that. Have the child take the assessments, the test assessment at JennyPhillips.com. Jenny Phillips is the creator of the Good and the Beautiful curriculum. But if you just Google the Good and the Beautiful, it will come up also, and I will link it down below. Then she talks about principles behind this course. Easy to teach with no preparation time. That really is true. Um, connects multiple subjects. Yes, I love that. Emphasizes the good and the beautiful God, family, nature, and high moral character. Yes. Focuses on high quality literature. Yes. C 
creates excellent writers and editors. And here are some commonly asked questions. Also, which I believe a lot of this information, it's all on her website too, if you go look under this course. And then she talks about getting started. She talks about the different things you'll use in this course. I will show you in this course, I already started cutting some up. So um, this was at the top, but I already started cutting it. You will get a whole bunch on wonderful card, card stock of challenging word cards just for them to be able to be fluent in reading these challenging words is what they are. And you cut them all out and she tells you, she breaks it down for how many minutes a day you should be working on each thing. This also comes with spelling words, okay? So practice spelling words with the child for five to 10 minutes, she's saying per day. Practice, have the child practice challenging word flashcards for five minutes. Um, have the child complete personal reading for at least 20 minutes and then complete 30 to 45 minutes in the course book with the child. And so that's really up to you if you break up those longer 45 minute lessons into two sessions. And then also work on poetry memorization. She gives you some wonderful poems one to two times a week. I'll be 100% honest. My son is really resistant to memorizing poetry right now. And so we have to pick the, you know, our battles. And I think he memorized two little poems last year and that was it. But he read all the poetry. And considering how resistant he was to poetry and art when we first started this curriculum, I am amazed how far he came. He was very resistant to the poetry and art parts. And I think just because um, we had not been exposed to that. And I just think it's a wonderful thing to bring into their lives. So the total daily time is 60 to 90 minutes. It really depends on how you orchestrate it. Okay, she talks about spelling some. Um, she talks about how much time you have to complete the course. If 30 to 45 minutes is completed in this course book each day, four to five days a week, some children who are fast readers or have good focus, um, they'll complete the course in less than a school year. And then you could just start the next year while some children will take more than one school year to complete this whole course, which is acceptable. Rather than setting a certain number of pages or lessons to complete in a day or a week, it is strongly suggested that you focus on consistency, spending 30 to 45 minutes in the course book four to five days a week, and letting the child complete the course at the speed that is right for the child. Spending less than the minimum times given is not suggested as the child will likely fall behind his or her appropriate level. But, and she goes to talk more. She has really good advice. And I completely agree with that. So then she tells you how to administer a course reading assessment right here. And that is in your course companion. So with the course comes um, the answer key, quick reference, spelling dictation, and poetry mem memorization. Each year, this course companion looks different based on what you need for that year. So the course companion, this outlines your daily checklist of how long to spend on each thing, which is kind of really nice to have it just, you know, at a glance right there. You have a map key because we will need this throughout the course for many lessons. You have a map key of Europe and of North America. And then you have a map key of the United States. Okay, then she recommends how to run the spelling words and how to practice for spelling. Basically, you go through her list of spelling words, which is here. Okay, chart one, chart two, chart three, chart four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight charts for this grade level. And I wouldn't test them over all these words at once, but basically I would probably give a pretest over all these words one day and he might miss two of them. And then I give a pretest over all these words one day and he might miss two of them. Like I said, he's a little bit ahead in reading and spelling with this course. Um, so he won't miss too many of these words. So by the time I've given him pretests on all these words, he might have missed eight words. And when you get to them missing around eight words, then you take those words and you work on them for a week or two in different spelling activities, and then you give them a spelling test. Now, until we used Jenny Phillips, we were using Soaring with Spelling, and I had already bought it for last year before I bought the Jenny Phillips, and I didn't know that spelling words came with this also. So last year we kind of doubled up on spelling. It wasn't too much though because 
he hardly missed any of these spelling words, so it really, it wasn't too much for him. But this year we are not adding on soaring with spelling. We've done that since first grade. And it is just a lot of repetitive practice work um, that he doesn't need to do. Too many worksheets, in my opinion, just, and he honestly didn't miss many words in there either. This is great for us. And so you practice the five to seven words that they've missed for five to seven days, and then you give a spelling test. And so there's room to check off when they've mastered that word, or if you need to go back and review that word. So these charts are for you to keep track of all these words. So by the end of the year, they will have mastered all these words. Then you have some active spelling practice ideas. Then she gives you all the spelling rules outlined, you know, like double consonants in the middle of a word, KC or CK at the end of words. I'll be honest, you guys, I didn't, I don't have any of these rules memorized. Like I don't remember ever learning these in school. Last year was the first time I was introduced to all these spelling rules and I'm actually a terrible speller. So it's actually helped me to learn these rules. I love how they're all outlined right here on one page. She tries to really make this easy for the parent to teach, which I so appreciate. Then you have poetry memorization. She gives you room to write, I have memorized these poems, four of them, and then you've recited that poem to three different people. She explains why to spend time on poetry memorization. So here is all the poems. She gives you a lot of poems to choose from in here. And I would recommend having your child read them all several times a year, even if it's not one they choose to memorize. It's just good to practice reading poetry and get it into you. And then in this book, there is a lot of poetry. And your child could also pick a poem out of here to memorize. Um, one that my son memorized was actually one he liked out of this, out of the big curriculum book last year. Then you have a glossary of what all these terms mean, like your adjective, adverb, articles, um, all that, so that you can have it just right here easy. You're not having to go to Google or you're not having to flip through this big book and find it, oh yeah, they told us that in another lesson, but I can't remember, and having to find that lesson. It is all here. So this book is literally your companion for the whole year. I love that it's small, it's easy. Our book took a beating last year. This book was, but it held up. So this is perfect right here. This is your parental course companion. And I forgot, they don't actually give you an answer key, I should mention that, for this grade level because most of it, they just assume the parent should know. They explain it so well in the lesson that you will know what the right answer is. In the next grade level, they start with giving the parent the whole answer key. So that is how that is. Okay, let's flip through this a little bit. I just want you to see how the lessons are outlined. All right, the stuff that just the parent needs to read is all in blue, and then it will prompt you when you need to read something to the child here, okay? And then there's check boxes throughout so you can keep track as you're going through the lesson because like here it will tell you to go do the worksheet of commas in a series, and that is after this artwork, and you will see right here commas in a series. So here's the worksheet for the child to do, page nine, and there's a completed box right there too. Okay, each lesson is outlined like this, like lesson one. And what are you learning in that lesson? You're learning commas in a series, but look at this. In that lesson is also thrown in poetry. In that lesson is also thrown in artwork, which I absolutely, literally, I am in love with. It teaches you some about the artist, about the country they're from. You look at the map. And they, in our last year, they showed us several pictures by the same artist, and we got to know some about their style and about them, I, I just, I love the poem and the artwork in this. And they're just, they are printed so nicely. Since we did um, took apart our book last year, I actually kept all the artwork in a folder just in case, I don't know, we ever wanna go back to it for something. So then you have like worksheets interspersed to go with that lesson. And then you have like lesson two, silent E. Um, jobs one through four. And then she's going to go into, see how each lesson looks so different? And that's why it doesn't get super boring because it's not the same thing repetitive over and over. Some has art, some has geography, some you are working on word parts, some you're working on spelling patterns. So here is your lesson two. 
okay? And it's continuing. Then you go into lesson three, spelling rule one, part one, and then there's another artwork. See that? And there's a lot of dictation in her books, at least in level two. Last year there was, and I loved having dictation. It's something that is not done in school today, and it is practicing those spelling words. It is practicing the spelling rules you learn. It is practicing the things you've just learned in giving them sentences and words as you dictate them. And that also practices, you know, handwriting, listening, just so many skills go into dictation. And that is just something that personally, my older son didn't have like any hardly in school that I know of from talking to him and seeing all the stuff that came home. Of course, he's going to be a high school freshman next year. So that was a long time ago, but okay. Well, not too long ago, but you know, a couple years ago, <laughs> lesson four, what makes a book worth reading? So she also teaches your kids and you guys talk about together, you know, is this acceptable in a book? Is that acceptable in a book? What kind of stuff are we looking for in a book? And she emphasized this last year too. And so she's going into it a little bit more because they're a little bit older. Then writer's workshop, what makes a book worth reading? And so everything in blue, read to the child, then you read the next thing. Um, the blue is what the parent needs to read to give them direction on how to teach this to the child. And so you just go through these lessons with the beautiful pictures and beautiful artwork. And like, here's lesson five. So I'm just gonna flip through this a little bit. And as I see stuff, I'll talk to you about it. I just wanna give you a sense of it. So this one is all about poetry. Then you can go into a lesson all about artwork and where that artist is from, the geography connection to that. I love it. I absolutely love it. I have learned so much from teaching this. This is definitely my favorite subject to teach now and so then like that lesson eight lesson nine and I'll admit you know lessons like possessive nouns and what was this one open syllables and spelling rule number two are boring to me and more boring to my son you know I mean she makes them the best she can but but I love how in between those lessons you know there's wonderful pictures fun or more fun you know, activities. I mean, I wouldn't ever say schoolwork. None of my boys have ever said schoolwork is fun. I mean, they're not girls. They're not the type that like to sit down and color. But then beautiful artwork, okay? Nouns and verbs going into that. We have um, editing a story. We edit and she, she gives you an answer key for that here. You cut that off or fold over the page. So she's teaching you how to edit with the correct editing symbols. We started that last year too. A geography connection, God's plan for our world. Okay, more geography. There's a poem there. Okay, North America, a dream home floor plan. So you can just see all the stuff that is in here. I personally, you know, have only homeschooled for four years. But like I said, I was a teacher and I've had a son in public school. I've seen a lot of textbooks. I've seen a lot of what he learned. And I have never seen a curriculum like this. And like I said, that's why I wanted to do the video, even though it won't be, you know, a popular video on my channel and many people who follow me won't want to watch it. And I get that, but it is just such quality curriculum. I just, I have to spread the word. So in this um, year, year three is the first time she starts to write cursive. She also sells a cursive book and I will um, bring that out and show you too. But we started cursive in first grade with another book because I heard that the earlier you teach it is the better and that was definitely the case with us and so I loved starting cursive in first grade with my son and she makes several le uh, levels of cursive books so you can do that but I like that she's now writing paragraphs this level three is the first year she's writing paragraphs to edit in cursive so last year all our editing paragraphs were just in print so that gives you practice with reading cursive so I love that. And so I could just go on and on, you guys. And then you do. You learn to diagram sentences, which, you guys, I don't ever remember doing in school. So I actually am learning along with my son. I'm going to be completely honest about that. Geography, you learn more. I pretty much am learning everything along with him. I mean, then she has just great stories and books interspersed for you to read okay and you talk about those books and it's just 
it's a curriculum I don't see how anyone can not love. If you're Christian, um, I don't see how you could not love this curriculum. So that is your that is your language arts, you guys. And like I said, if you want to see some of the older grades language arts, I will link Michaela's YouTube and um, I think it's Monson Schoolhouse. So she doesn't live anywhere near me, but I feel like I know her a little bit from her Instagram. She homeschools four of her kids, which I think this is going to be their third year or something like that. I'm probably wrong on the number, but she pulled them all out from public school. So she's someone really fun to follow if you're just starting out and you need motivation. Okay, because this kind of goes with language arts, this is her creative writing book. So I'm going to show you this and then I'm going to share the language arts readers and the cursive book. And then I think I'm going to do a completely different review. I mean, new videos on her history and her science together. Because this video will just get too long. I feel like it. So um, I think I'll do a separate video on history and science curriculum of hers. And then I use a completely different math curriculum. I use, she's just starting to develop her math curriculum. So I have used a mammoth math since we started homeschooling. This will be our fourth year. And I will do a whole nother video on that too. Okay, this is her creative writing notebook. This is our first year to use this. This is her notebook one. I think she already has a notebook two out and she's coming up with more. She tells you online what grade levels this would be good with. I think that um, fourth grade might be the first level she's recommending or third for this and up. And so last year we did the nature journal instead of this. She has a nature journal, which I really loved, and it was beautiful too. But this year we, we're doing her creative writing book as just an add-on. We're doing it like two days a week. And so she talks about writing good and beautiful style. You can be a light in the dark world. I love this. And then it's divided into sections. Descriptive writing practices, number one. And she just talks about how to make, you know, your sentences more descriptive. And you talk about that. And you talk about senses and describing things. And she just has really fun pages with lots of color. And describe the scene. And there's more artwork in here. And then more describe the scene and more artwork. It's just, it's beautiful. And then you have some writing exercises in the next section. So I'm just going to flip through here so you can see it. Then you have story starters, okay, and you talk about different things like um, main characters and antagonists and character sketch, possible settings, possible good and beautiful messages, ideas for mysteries, possible first paragraphs. So you go into all this. I don't even know if we'll finish this book this year in fourth grade, so this may be something um, we might even finish. We'll see how it's going the next year but um first paragraphs poetry okay poetry brainstorming i love how they just take you through every step of it more beautiful artwork love that and just how every page is made beautiful it's like the name of her curriculum the good and the beautiful and i feel like her curriculum in itself is beautiful the artwork she picks is beautiful it brings good feelings it brings calming feelings. It brings, you know, feelings of a love of nature, love for God and all his creations. And so there's just, there's a lot of pictures in here to inspire your writing. And then full stories at the end. She goes into that. Overcoming writer's block. It's just, it's a beautiful book. But look at the age she recommends online for this because I think it might be re recommended um, yeah, my son's age might have been right around the lowest, um, fourth grade to start this one. But she has other books for younger kids. Like she has a great crafts book for like K and one and two maybe. There's just, she has a lot of options on her site. Let's talk about cursive. So I got my son for next year, the handwriting level five book. And that's because even though he's in fourth grade, he has been doing cursive since first grade. So looking at the books online, I felt like that would be the right fit for him. I wanted to show you what we've used until we found her last year. So I had already bought him the next book in our program last year before we found The Good and the Beautiful. And we were using the New American Cursive. 
And I actually really liked it. We started it in first grade and we did not finish a whole book in a year. We did not finish a whole book in a year. We took almost, um, almost two years to finish one book or a year and a half. And then we started the next book and we've taken about a year and a half and we're almost done with that because we only do cursive about twice a week. The first year, I think we did it about three times a week to, you know, get into the groove of it. But so New American Penmanship, I think, is is a great cursive book also. Um, it's been good, but I think I'm going to be happier with The Good and the Beautiful. One thing I did like about this one is the coils at the top, which just makes it easier for kids to write. And I did already write that suggestion to The Good and the Beautiful that any book that kids are writing in, the coil should go at the top because then no matter if they're right-handed or left-handed, there is never a coil getting in your way. Luckily, this is a very small coil, so I don't think it'll be a huge problem at all, but here's what her handwriting level five looks like, and she has examples of every level. And you know what, you guys, I forgot to mention, you can even download her entire language arts level for free. I believe it's still a free download. And if you want to print it on your own, you don't even have to buy it. So I don't even have it up here anymore because I already took it downstairs. The whole language arts curriculum that I just showed you, you can download completely free. She has some things on her site like that that you can do. And you could go print it on your own. So she is offering it for free, which is amazing. I personally like to have it printed by her because it's printed really nice on great paper and I don't feel like I could get that much cheaper printing somewhere and it would be a lot more trouble. And so I love just buying it already printed from her, but that is an option. And so also if you're teaching multiple kids, you know, the pages that they need to go and do, you can have printed. So she offers that with her different ones. Um, you can go print it on your own. You can have printed many times for free if you're going to be teaching many kids that same um, level. So there's different options like that. Definitely explore it all on her site. I'm only teaching one child and um, I don't have any more kids after him. So I haven't really explored that a lot. But this is level five um, handwriting. And so this is what level five looks like. First, it's just kind of going over each letter but she also has art things for you to do on each page. And then it goes into, it's really putting art with handwriting. Um, you're writing things um, like uh, Bible verses or good phrases or like a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. So stuff like that. It also has some drawing lessons interspersed. Um, at the end here, you're copying a whole stanza from a poem down here. So that's kind of like what level five ends up at. But that is what her handwriting book looks like. We will be starting into this next year because we are almost done with the handwriting book that we are in. That's the biggest thing I would say is don't be afraid if your child doesn't finish something one year to carry it over to the next year. Don't just try to push through it and rush through something because that's something that is done in school a lot. I know from teaching and from my older son, everything is always a rush. Like here, you have 10 minutes to do this. Just do as much as you can in 10 minutes. Or just finish it the best you can in 10 minutes, you know? And so I think um, one of the blessings of homeschool is we can put more emphasis on the learning and, you know, actually doing a good job and um, the trying to foster the enjoyment of learning versus just trying to get something done. Okay. So here is the nature notebook we used this year. We did not finish everything in it, but he is kind of tired of it. He's a boy. Everything like this kind of has to be pushed on him. He's a real, he's not into anything, you know, school, school, really. Um, things he loves to pick up and do on his own is he loves to write in planners and <laughs> journals and books like that with all different pens. Um, he's picked that up from me, but you know, if you give him an assignment, that's a different thing, but he wanted to fill out the All About Me, so it's like whenever he's in the mood to do that, this book was really beautiful. Here are some pages we did. And he's also not into drawing, so I don't push that on those pages. He used to be with much younger when he was much younger, but he's stuck on the thing of if it doesn't look just how he wants, then it's upsetting, and that's something, you know, we just have to keep working through. 
but we did a lot of pages in here even if he skipped the art part he did the writing parts and he did a little bit of art there and so it just has a section for each season and some really good prompts to get you to go outside and look at stuff find stuff um, research stuff online and so um, I think it's a great nature journal and we will actually be picking it back up you know probably the year after this year so when he's had a year break from it we might come back and finish it that's the beauty of this is it really can be for any grade level and so um, it's really just um, what you want to tell them to do with the assignment even um, these could be modified for a kindergartner if you wanted all your kids to be doing them. But that's just my opinion. And so that's that's what we've done with it this year. Some pages he took to and really put his all into and other pages, you know, he didn't. But that's how most things are with us, at least. Okay, last thing I want to show you in this language arts themed The Good and the Beautiful video. You buy these separately, so you don't have to buy them with the curriculum. It's all sold separately if you don't want to buy them. Um, these are the readers for the level three. And like I said, we were already reading these last year. And so she has a whole Good and the Beautiful book list, which we can go off for this year. Um, but these have, there's two for level three. Not every level has readers. Some have books that you read, and they're all different. But they are all really good older stories um, that just, I don't know, teach good lessons, have good morals. I'll be honest, my, it's not the most fun thing that my son has ever read for him. Um, but I think it's good. And, you know, sometimes kids have to be pushed to do things that, you know, we know are good for them. <laughs> so... I highly recommend the readers. This is just for them to do their 20 minutes of reading from every day. We also did the second grade ones, which he enjoyed um, the second grade ones more. But he finished those literally in like two months. And that's why I went ahead and bought third grade ones. Or he might have even finished them faster than two months. So I went ahead and bought the third grade um, ones last year, even though we were only doing level two curriculum. But... I highly recommend them. It's great for their 20 minutes of reading uh, to themselves or reading aloud to you. I always have made him read aloud to me for 20 minutes because it is harder to read aloud than to read in your head. And you learn a lot, you know, practicing reading out loud. And so that's just something that I do as a former teacher. I think that practicing reading aloud, even still at his age, at least a couple times a week, for a good duration is really important. Okay guys, that wraps up my The Good and the Beautiful Language Arts Curriculum. We also went over cursive, nature notebook, and, or she calls it handwriting. All right guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.